Welcome to our review on half equations and ionic equations. So the first thing we're going to take a look at then are these things called half equations. So I've started off with a little example here. The kind of question we could get could start off with sodium Na reacts with chlorine Cl2 to make sodium chloride NaCl. So they could ask you to write the word equation for that reaction, which is shown on that second line. So sodium plus chlorine makes sodium chloride. They could ask you to write the balanced symbol equation for the reaction, including state symbols. So that would be our 2Na with the S representing the solid plus Cl2 because chlorine is a gas and then it makes 2NaCl, which is a solid again. So that could be the initial point of our question. And obviously, if you get a word equation, it will be a one mark question. If it asks you for a balanced symbol equation with state symbols, we could be looking at a three mark question. What we might be asked to do next then is to actually write what's called a half equation. Now, all we mean by a half equation is a model for the change that happens to one reactant. So as opposed to the balanced symbol equation, which literally looks at the whole thing, the half equation is going to focus on just one of the reactants. So in the example we've just seen there, if we were asked to write the half equation for what happens to sodium, then what we actually find is our sodium atoms are going to lose an electron in order to become a sodium ion. So what we actually find is that to write the half equation, you write the actual sodium atom symbol first of all, which is the capital N lowercase a, then that's going to form a sodium ion. It's in group one, therefore it has a single positive charge and we've lost an electron. We can't ignore that. So you have to put the plus E minus and the symbol there E minus is for an electron. If we had a look at the chlorine instead, then we start off with chlorine atoms, Cl2, because it's diatomic, it's in group seven. And what we need to do there is gain electrons to turn them into the chloride ions. So we have our Cl2, which is our chlorine gas. It's gonna gain two electrons, and that makes two chloride ions, as shown by the formula at the bottom. The other kind of equation they could ask you to write is an ionic equation. Now, if we think about a complete ionic equation, first of all, then that shows all of the ions present in a reaction mixture. So in addition to the ions, it will also usually include the formula of any molecular substances or any substances that are occurring in the solid state. So at the top there, what we've got is our balanced symbol equation. So we've got hydrochloric acid, HCl, it's an aqueous solution plus our sodium hydroxide, again, an aqueous solution, and we're gonna make sodium chloride, an aqueous solution, and water, which is a liquid. Now, if we write the complete ionic equation, then what we need to do is split up any of those compounds that are ionic compounds into the individual ions. So HCl, for example, would split up into H plus and Cl minus. Our sodium hydroxide would split into Na+, and then remember the hydroxide is a compound ion, so OH-. Then on the right-hand side, what we've got, sodium, Na+, chloride, Cl-, and then we've got our water, which doesn't split because it's not an ionic compound at that point. So we just write it as H2O with the liquid state symbol. Now, when we actually look at that complete ionic equation, hopefully what you've noticed is that our sodium and our chloride ions are the same on the left and the right of the arrow. So because they haven't changed between our reactants and our products, then we refer to them as spectator ions. They're not taking part in the reaction that we're interested in. So when we come to write our net ionic equation, we're going to ignore them. So at the top, we've still got our complete ionic equation there just so that we can see it. When they ask you to write the net ionic equation, we leave out those spectator ions. So what we're going to do in this case is we're going to leave out the sodium ions and the chloride ions. So all you do is you ignore their existence and then rewrite it just with the ones that have changed. So in this case, it's the H plus plus OH minus 
and that makes water with the H2O liquid. Don't forget the state symbols because again, that could be worth a mark on the actual exam paper. One of the ways they're likely to ask you this question could very well be in terms of precipitation reactions, because what we can then see there is that we can just look at the actual ions involved in the change. So remember to leave the spectator ions out and write the net ionic equation only showing those that have changed between the reactants and the products.